Let's look at the magnetic force and torque on a loop of wire. We'll make the magnetic field first perpendicular to the loop. So here we have a, a red loop of wire with a current flowing in it. And the magnetic field points straight up out of the page at you. If we use the right hand rule, putting our forefinger along the direction of the current and the tips of our other fingers pointing in the direction of the B field, our thumb then points in the direction of the force. So it points that way on that side of the, of the square loop and that way upwards on the top to the left on the left side and downward on the bottom side. All these forces balance each other so the, the net force is zero. The torque is also zero so there is no movement in this case. But what if we now make the magnetic field perpendicular to two sides of the loop? So we put our B field like this. It's perpendicular to two sides but parallel to two other sides. So the force is zero on the top where it's parallel and zero on the bottom where it's parallel. The force is pointing towards you on the left hand side and pointing inwards on the right hand side because of the different currents using the right hand rule. The F net is still zero, but the torque is not zero. So this square loop will start to spin, but if you go half a turn, the forces will switch. We put a little blue arrow on the on the diagram so we can see the right hand side now becomes the left hand side and at that point after you turn something halfway around the current will be flowing the other way around the loop. What that means is that the torque reverses at this point so it won't keep turning instead it starts to oscillate back and forth. So we have it oscillating. Kind of nice, but it might be interesting to keep going because if we kept it going we would have an electric motor. So here's a loop and the two of, a, of, wire, of wire, almost a square loop of wire, but there are two contacts coming down to the tops of a battery. There's a plus side and a minus side. As this loop will spin, those two contacts will change from being plus to minus. So that, as before, we have the, these two forces on the, on the upright sides, one in and one out of the page, which will make it start to spin. I'm going to label one of the sides of the square with a, a red marker, so that when we make a half turn, it's now over there. But we see after it makes, when it makes a half turn, the contact changes, so the current remains the same, so the force remains the same. So what we have then is an electric motor, or if we look carefully at this, we'll see that as this spins around, the loop keeps going. So we have our electric motor.